So this is supposed to be part three, but I think I'll um, I'll make this part one so that you can cut to the chase and the fix on the cold start issue. But I'll make part uh, two, maybe three. I have a lot of video of all the testing that I did on the cold start valve and other things. You know, trying to figure out how to test a cold start valve. Um, after blowing that 10 amp fuse, starting to test, I said, okay, I'm done. <laughs> you saw that I, te I tested it in a jar with battery and got it to spray. I go, oh, okay, it sprays, it's good. You know, it's a $400 plus part. Can you imagine if I would have, oh, I'm going to buy a new one. And it still does the same thing. So try to troubleshoot your problems without having to buy parts that you don't need um and uh just you know lesson learned so yeah so if you've got one of these cars and you're still you're having cold start issues and you have new filters on there you know you can try testing your cold start valve you live in a cold climate you can try testing it um, and uh, there's a little information there on duty cycle that might help some people that if they're not sure um, what I definitely would do though is make sure that all your tune-up parts are in good condition before even attempting to touch the duty cycle or the EHA adjustment um, the duty cycle is not that hard to do with that meter as long as everything else is good, you know, your distributor caps and this and that. Um, the EHA, I would not touch that with a 10-foot pole trying to adjust that because I've tried it on other cars and man, on one other car and it, <laughs> just a tiny, a tiny turn of that screw on the back of it and throw everything off and you'll never get it back to where it was. The only way to, to adjust that, do, that uh, EHA valve is with a set of gauges like Victor in the video and restore my Mercedes. I think that's, the, I'll put a link to his site there, but uh, <clears throat> that's the only way I would attempt to adjust the EHA valve. It adjusts the lower pressure of the fuel distributor and that EHA valve is responsible for a lot of stuff and usually when they go bad they start leaking gas. They hardly ever go bad internally electrically. There's you know a coil in there and everything it hardly ever goes bad. It's usually the gaskets on the inside that get worn out or get old and start you start losing pressure your full fuel pressure because that thing is under fuel pressure so don't touch that thing if it's leaking if you see that it's leaking gas replace it all right we're going to test uh first first start of the day kind of a cold start 68 is not real cold oh well, let's see how this thing starts after my diagnosis In. Everything seems to be normal. Let's give it a shot. Wow. First time. First try. First time. So, after all my testing, Turns out to be air filters, the air filters, air filters uh, was from a previous owner. They looked clean. They were they were old. I mean, I don't know how old they were, but they were. Uh, you could you could not see light through them. If you held it up to the sun or a bright light, you couldn't see anything through there. So, um, 
I ran the numbers on the side of the uh, air cleaners and it's not a Mercedes number. It turned out to be a Chinese manufacturer of a, and when I put, put it in Google, it was Kaka Parts. Kaka Parts. And I think uh, they are Kaka Parts. I have never in my life with probably 30, 40 cars I've owned have had an issue with the air cleaner causing cold starts. So live and learn. Let's back it up. I'm so glad I finally found this issue. It took me years to find it. I just didn't want to work on it. Um, you know, when I first got the car, It was hard starting when cold. Okay, the more I think about it, it didn't even have to be cold. It's just if the car sits overnight and it could be 90 degrees out and you do that first start and it would take uh, a long time for it to start and it would kind of, you know, hesitate, act weird. Um, so I just said, well, maybe it needs new uh, distributor caps. So I replaced the distributor caps, the rotors, the spark plugs, um, the OVP relay, a bunch of other stuff. Still had that kind of weird start issue. Um, and then when I was doing all that, testing for the cold start valve, which I was told, check your cold start valve. So I spent like a week, you know, off and on just testing it and testing the temperature sensor and looking for codes and chasing my tail. And only did I notice maybe a couple days ago is that when I was testing to see if the cold start valve was you know, uh, firing or spraying gas in that jar. I said, wow, it starts on the first start. That's weird. On um, the first try. And then I started thinking, what's different? I don't have any air filters on there. So I looked into it and um, I guess that's what it is. Um, so I ordered some new ones, so if you have cold start issues with your SL, uh, try taking the air filters off and see what happens. I mean, you might have all these other issues, but this thing, you know, I take pretty good care of it and it's fairly low mileage, 38,000 miles. Um, yeah, try taking the, uh, the air cleaners off and see if it starts like that. If it does, then you know you got bad or dirty air cleaners. I mean, that uh, air cleaner box is sealed really good when the air cleaners are on there. They did a good job of that. Make sure all the incoming air is going to be real directed through the filters. Um, so that's what it was. Yeah, let's take it for a little quick test drive. It is a Sunday. I think it's February 7th or 6th. how it runs with no filters probably the air 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 flows a little too much for the system but I just want to make sure it's not gonna seems to run okay huh um, one thing that happened during testing was uh, was that I blew a fuse. The OVP relay testing the uh, coolant or the uh, cold start valve. And 
put a jumper in the wiring to test for the uh, 12 volts and see what it was doing when it was running. And I heard that uh, ringing sound. The engine wouldn't even start. And uh, I heard this ringing sound. So I unplugged the uh, one of the jumpers to the, the test jumpers to the cold start valve. Ringing stopped. Turned the key off. Checked the OVP, and I blew a 10 amp fuse in it. So I guess that's what was causing the ringing. So I just want to make sure I didn't fry anything else in there. So don't test that that circuit with the engine running. I mean, you can unplug the connector to the cold start valve, and uh, you can test the voltage there with the uh, ignition on, engine off, and it will confirm that you have 12 volts there, but it has some kind of a weird circuitry. I'm not 100% how that works, but I think they use uh, part of the ground is what turns it on and off, turns the valve on and off, and uh, it makes zero sense to me why uh, why it's short-circuited and blew that, that fuse. Seems to be running okay, don't have any weird lights. nice here today. It's be about 75 degrees in February. Are you kidding me? Southern California. Very good at accelerates without cutting out or anything. I think we're good. I'm so glad I figured out that problem without spending a ton of money. I was thinking the cold start valve was bad because uh, everywhere I asked on all the forums, cold start, cold start, what do I do? Check your cold start valve. This is how you do it. Put it in a jar. See if it's spraying when it's really cold out. You know. So. And then there was a question that nobody really seemed to answer. Uh, people answered, but too confusing. Um, some people said, um, you'll never need that cold start valve living in California. It only activates when it's like at zero degrees, uh, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Others would be like 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Other liter literature on the internet anything below 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so, you know, that's, I just, I couldn't find it in any manual or anything. Well, the thing about this, these cars is, uh, you know, if I had a, an electrical schematic for the car, that would be cool. But it's hard to get that information. I guess the only way you can really do it is subscribe to like one of those all data places. And then I hope that they have the right wiring for your car. That, you know, even if they say they do, it's kind of like, remember those old uh, Haynes manuals and you'd buy it. And you'd go, hey, here's a manual for my car. And then you see that it covers like 20 different models and it has schematics in the back. And you don't know. It doesn't match up to your car. Some things kind of do, but not, you know. So unlike my Lincoln that I bought, 2000 Lincoln, I immediately found factory manuals for the electrical and mechanical system of the car. And I mean, it has every electrical schematic you would want. It's all color coded. It's great, but with the Mercedes, it's hard. I think it's hard for all of them. 
Um, Mercedes kind of holds on to that information. They don't want you to know how to fix things yourself. They want you to take it to the dealer and have it done that way. But, you know, it's kind of hard when you're a DIY guy and stumbling your way through it like I did with this thing. But at least, um, you know, over the last eight years, I've replaced all the tune-up parts, and I just did the fuel pumps and accumulator. Um, the only thing wrong I have with this car now is the Hertz duty cycle. It's an adjustment uh, where you can adjust the, uh, the fuel mixture just a little bit on the fuel distributor, and you do it with a uh, meter like I have in the video. Um, and it gives you, you know, you want to have it cycling at 50%. And it's, um, you know, it really tells you that that thing is tuned right. And what it, what I like it is it for is that here in California, our mission testing is, is pretty brutal. You know, the car fails and you're screwed. And usually with these old Mercedes, before I go get a mission tested, I always check the duty cycle to see if it's good or not. Like uh, the 300E my son has, I, he had to have a mission testing done and, and I checked the duty cycle and I couldn't read it. It was just like this car. When uh, you, know, you hook up the leads and stuff and there's zero information on there. Um, so, with his car, I ended up replacing the EHA because it was leaking gas, and that corrected the duty cycle like that. It came back, and I'm, you know, perfect. Um, with this car, the, I'm kind of hesitant on, a, you know, such an expensive part that's not leaking, and I did test the EHA to see that it's uh, the circuit is good in it by ohming it out and getting the correct readings for that. So I'll keep inquiring on that. I don't have to get it tested this year, but next year I gotta get it tested. It's always passed, you know. But I would like a heads up and uh, be able to read that, just like I, I think I put uh, Victor in, uh, was it um, Restore Your Mercedes site on YouTube, and it, he shows his 91, you know, with his duty cycle and how it's hooked up and all that stuff. Anyways, uh, I think that's about uh, about it for now. Maybe I will lift the hood and take a look under there. Well, it looks good. It's not uh, it's not leaking. There's your cold start valve, and there's the electrical. Only test that plug when the ignition is on and engine isn't started, because you could blow the OVP relay uh, fuse and cause other damage. You got your coolant sensors here. Again, this one over here. It's the one pin that's for the gauge. That's for the the needle in the gauge. Uh, this is the four pin that controls um, controls the uh, CIS. Tells the engine is cold. And I think there's a cold start function and it also it also talks to the EZO which is over here you got another two pin sensor um, and that one is um, I believe that one is for a auxiliary fans for the fans in the front to come on um, usually when the thing is overheating um, other than that, you've got your fuel distributor there with your tower for adjustment. You remove that ball bearing, then you can adjust it. EHA, X11 connector for testing the Hertz duty cycle over on this side. Um, yeah. So this is the, uh, these are the air filters. Kind of looks like a star. And I mean, it doesn't look horribly dirty. I guess they're kind of faded. This is from the previous owner. I mean, even the inside doesn't doesn't even really have any dirt in it.
bad air filter.